Two particles A and B start initially from points with position vectors 6i minus 14j and 3i minus 2j respectively. The velocities of A and B are constant and are equal to 4i minus 3j and 5i minus 7j respectively. We are going to get the velocity of B relative to A. So um, particle B is moving in this direction with this velocity. Particle A is moving in this direction here. So we want to see the velocity of B as seen from point A. So we imagine moving axes centered at point A moving with point A. So it's going to be moving in this direction here. So to get VBA we get the velocity of B minus the velocity of A. So VB is the velocity of B relative to the fixed axes or the absolute velocity of B if you like. That's 5i minus 7j and subtract VA which is the absolute velocity of A or the velocity of A relative to the fixed axes. Okay and uh, working this out we get I minus 4j if we look at the component, the I component of VB, this makes sense. The I component is 5I, whereas the I component of VA is 4I. So we can see that um, in the horizontal direction, B is going to gain on A. It's going to gain on A by 1 meter per second in the horizontal direction. That's 5 minus 4. In the vertical direction, B is also going to gain on A. The vertical component of B is minus 7j, whereas the vertical component of A is only uh, minus 3j. So in the vertical direction, if we consider the projection of B onto the um, y-axis, the projection will move with a speed of 7 meters per second downwards, whereas the projection of A will move with only a speed of 3 meters per second. So obviously um, in the vertical direction B will gain on A by 4 meters per second, 7 minus 3. So uh, this relative velocity vector makes sense. In the next question we are going to show that the particles collide. Now to do that we need to consider the relative position vector, okay? In particular the, um, the position of B relative to A. So this vector has its tail at A and its head at B. Now we could do it the other way around actually, we could put our moving axes at B and uh, consider the position of A relative to B, but you know, since we already have our relative velocity vector defined as the velocity of B relative to A, we are going to consider the position of B relative to A. And uh, we know from a previous video that that's just RB minus RA, the position of B relative to A. And as I, I've explained before, um, if you take vector RA and add it onto this here, onto vector RBA, the RAs will cancel and we will get vector RB. So um, everything works out, you know, if we apply the triangle law. Vector RA plus vector RBA should give us R vector RB. So uh, let's take the I component of vector RB, that's 3, subtract the I component of RA, 6, 3 minus 6 is minus 3I, and then we take the um, J component of RB, minus 2, and subtract the J component of RA, minus 14, minus 2 minus minus 14, minus 2 plus 14 is plus 12. Okay, so at time T equals naught, particle A is here, and particle B is here. Now, from the point of view of A, if B is to collide with A, then the velocity of B relative to A must be in a direction that's opposite to vector RBA. So VBA, which I'll show in green, must be along the same line as vector RBA. So that's the key point for the collision of two particles. The direction of the relative velocity vector VBA will be opposite the direction of the relative position vector RBA. So as time goes on, okay, initially the timer is zero. As time goes on, from A's perspective, B will appear to move along the direction of the relative velocity vector RBA. 
So, let's see that that's true. How can we tell if one vector points in the opposite direction of another vector? Well, if the vectors point in opposite directions, then one vector will be a negative scalar times the other vector. Okay, so this k is some scalar, it's some positive number actually. Okay, and by sticking a minus sign in front of it, we in ensure that we get a negative scalar multiple of vector RBA. Let's see if this is true. Now, I didn't have to write it like this. I could have written RBA has to be a negative scalar, call it C, multiple of vector VBA. Okay, so either way will do. It doesn't matter. Um, if one vector points in the opposite direction of the other vector, then uh, the second vector points in the opposite direction of the first vector, of course. Doesn't matter. So let's see if this is true. Well, vector VBA is I minus 4J. And let's see if it's equal to minus K times vector RBA. In other words, can we find a positive number K for which this is true? Well, this is quite easy to check actually. Um, multiplying minus K in here, we get plus 3KI minus 12kj. Now all we have to do is compare the components. So on the, the component of i on the left hand side is plus 1. The component of i on the right hand side is 3k. So 3k must equal 1. In other words, k must equal 1 divided by 3. Okay, and if you plug that value of k in here, 12 minus 12 times plus a third does indeed give you minus 4. So it does work out. So there is a number k um, such that vector VBA is minus k times vector RBA. Another way you could see that is if you just take the ratio of the components. So the ratio of the components of vector VBA is minus 4 over 1. Okay, I've just taken the J component and divided it by the I component. Um, and if we do that for vector RBA, we get 12 over minus 3. Now, minus 4 divided by 1 is minus 4. Um, we get the same result for 12 divided by minus 3. So, if these two numbers are the same, it turns out that the vectors point in opposite directions. Here's a reason for what I just said. Suppose we have a general vector, xi plus yj. Now, I'm showing this vector in this quadrant. Okay, so the coordinates of this point here are x comma y in this quadrant, but of course, I could show this vector in any of the four quadrants. Let's consider a vector that's opposite in direction to this vector. So it's got to be a negative scalar multiple of this vector. Okay, so uh, k is some positive number. And I've multiplied minus k by this vector. So because I'm multiplying by something negative, it reverses the direction of this vector. And, uh, you know, k could be any number. It could be a half, a quarter, it could be 10, it could be 100. As long as it's negative, as we have a minus sign included, okay, we'll get a vector pointing in a direction opposite to this vector. Now let's look at the ratio of the components. Well, the ratio of the components of this vector is y over x. What about the ratio of the components of this vector? If we put the j component over the i component, we get minus ky over minus kx. The minus k is cancel, and you can see that the ratio is the same. So that's what I did over here. I got the ratio of the components, and, you know, minus 4 over 1 is the same as plus 12 over minus 3. Therefore, vector VBA points in a direction opposite to vector RBA. And that's the condition for the particles to collide. So it is the case that these two particles will collide.